Good morning and uh, welcome to the Thursday, April 7th Preparations Committee meeting. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out this morning. My name is uh, Councilmember Braithwaite. We do have a quorum. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, first up, item A is the approval for the March 3rd Preparations Committee minutes. Move approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. If you could just take a quick moment if you haven't already looked through it. Are there any changes or amendments. Seeing none, all pardon. Good. All those in all those in favor of approving the March third, twenty second uh, <coughs> committee minutes meetings, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. We'll move on. Uh, next up we have item three A, which is before we get in there. We're going to move public comments to the front, and I'd like to make that that change in our agenda, um, just so moving forward, we're doing our public comments in the front. So I know that we have uh, a couple of guests, but I'm going to take the community members first, and then after that, we'll give on the back end the time for our, our special guests. So, and Don, I saw your hand, and I couldn't, and I'm sorry, sir, I saw the hand, but I didn't see the face. Someone else wanted to speak during public comments? Johnson. Mr. Johnson, okay. And Donald, would you like to go first and then followed by uh, Mr. Johnson? You have uh, three minutes. Sure, I just had, had a really quick question. Um, yes. I know that the last meeting that we had, we were discussing um, what might possibly happen. Is this part of your comment? Oh, yes. You oh, there we go. Mike, please. <laughs> cover it up. Cover it up. <laughs> So you want to be on TV and or Facebook? Well, no. Yes, yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Antona. And um, my public comment is basically a question that was posed by the public during our last meeting, um, which was for those that do qualify for receiving the $25,000 if they, for a home improvement, if they don't use the entire amount, what would happen to the remainder? So and I, I didn't that get was into that, that was during the meeting just because we typically don't go back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to note the question. Okay. And then as soon as we uh, get to the update on beneficiaries, I'll address it then. Perfect, thanks. Thank you very much for your comment. Mr. Johnson. Bennett Johnson, <clears throat> and I have uh, reviewed, as you know, uh, for some time the reparation plan that's been approved by our city. And I have a suggestion for a modification called the Freedom Plan. And I'd like to have it on the agenda at our next meeting as often possible. Thank you so much. It would be helpful, Mr. Johnson, if you have it in writing, if you could please share it with one of our staff persons. Yeah, I, and then I have it. And that way we can. Uh, Ms. Kerr, do you want it? Yes, sir. I need to give him a form last year as well. Okay. It's updated out. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, several guests who are uh, here, some from out of town, who wants to share some additional resources outside of what we've been providing through the City of Evanston and as well as our uh, preparation stakeholder authorities. And I think I'm going to turn it over to uh, Committee Member Bruce Simmons to please introduce them and tee it up for those that are listening. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman. Um, good morning, everyone. As you know, we have been working very hard to <coughs> um, implement our reparation plan, but at the same time, we've been working very hard to expand it, knowing that uh, mortgage lending and financial products and institutions have um, played a role in the uh, conditions that we have. We have uh, partnered with, excuse me, that's incorrect, we have found support from financial institutions that have provided um, an acknowledgement of support of the work that we're doing here in Evanston 
as well as mortgage products and other services that can complement and expand the benefits of reparations here in Evanston. So we have um, a couple of out-of-town guests. We're going to start with uh, Liberty Bank's Vice President of Mortgage, Jonathan Wilson, and their Senior Consumer Lending um, Partnership Officer, David C. Buggett, thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. And just as a disclaimer, this is in no way an endorsement from the city of Evanston. There is no requirement from anyone to use any of these um, lenders or any partners that support reparations in Evanston, but we do appreciate, excuse me, I'm speaking personally, I do appreciate that other institutions have raised their hands to add value to what we're doing here in Evanston. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jonathan Wilson. I'm the Director of Mortgages at Liberty Bank and Trust. To the members of the committee and the chairman, thank you for allowing us to share a little bit about our company. Since 1972, Liberty Bank and Trust was formed with a focus on service, integrity, and sincere interest in building the communities through home ownership and business development. We are currently the largest wholly owned African American bank in the country, operating in 10 states with assets exceeding $1 billion. At Liberty, we pride ourselves on working to provide financial opportunities to all communities. Our CEO, Alden McDonald Jr., is committed to providing cost-effective delivery of high-quality, innovative, customer-driven financial products and services to diverse markets with a focus on disadvantaged communities who have been traditionally underserved. African-American-owned financial institutions help grow the economy and build jobs in the communities they serve, mainly from underbanked neighborhoods by mainstream financial institutions. Throughout our history, our company has worked to improve outcomes with innovative products and services to the communities we serve who are in need. Examples of our commitment to our customers and our communities can be found in our response to customers' needs after Hurricane Katrina, partnering with the City of New Orleans to expedite funds released to those who want to return after major catastrophes, as well as the work that we have performed in the City of Detroit to fight a blight. We continue this innovative work today with products designed to assist customers with breaking hard money payday loan cycle, provide proving concepts on affordable housing through construction, and providing clear terms and fair rates on revolving lines of credit and mortgage loans. The work of our body is ground, the work of this body is groundbreaking and historic in nature. It's something that's followed all across the country, including by us in New Orleans, Louisiana. Over our 50-year history, our company has worked with agencies and municipalities, not unlike you all, to help grow opportunities in the communities that you serve and improve economic outcomes for the residents with a focus on equity. Working with a city and a group of people committed to ending structural racism and achieving racial equity fits into our experience and our mission. And we're looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. I, I didn't catch your first name. <coughs> Jonathan Wilson. Mr. Wilson, can you please make sure that before you leave, that if you have something in writing that we can share in our public packet, as well as your contact information or who is your designee, we'd appreciate that, sir. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please stay after. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have from Devon Bank, uh, Dave Vance. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a little taller. <laughs> Thanks for having me here today. Uh, I'm Dave Vance. I run the Mortgage Fulfillment Operation Group for Devon Bank, uh, headquartered here in West Riders Park, a whopping four miles away from where we sit right now. Um, we're super excited to participate in this program, this reparations program. Uh, we've been supporting the city, city of Evanston and the surrounding communities for the past 75 years. Uh, we are a small community bank. We have about four retail branch locations. Uh, we are exactly what the community bank is all about, right? Serving the community in which we represent. And 
you know, one way we recognize that at Divine Bank is through our employees and their diversity. Uh, we have probably the most ethnically diverse market in the United States, right near Rogers Park. And a testament to, to what we do to support that, of our employees, we have 29 different languages that we can communicate to customers wow. with in our bank. And we're a tiny little community bank. So we have a lot of diversity within our employee staff to be able to support a very diverse uh, community. Uh, our mortgage experience, uh, we've, been, we've been in the lending industry for, for decades. Uh, we support, uh, through our Community Reinvestment Act, we are focused on Lake and Cook County, which is where we uh, do most of our banking business. And we have a number of initiatives through affordable housing outreach that we participate in. Uh, one of the areas we, we're really uh, excited about that we've been working on for decades as well is Islamic financing. We are one of a handful of financial institutions in the country that offer halal Islamic financing. And uh, it's a special niche that uh, you know, we serve, and it serves not only the city of Chicago and the community, but uh, we serve the entire United States with that product. Can you please just take a moment and explain what that is? Because I don't think many people understand what, what that is and how sure. special it is. Sure, Islamic financing is a, a faith-based financing product. So uh, what we've done, uh, David Lowndy, our CEO, has, has developed uh, a product that meets the standards for the Islamic com community. Uh, they are not allowed to pay interest, carry debt, etc. So uh, we've partnered with and and received approval from the Islamic community for this product that we have developed. And so it, uh, you know, it, it, for the rest of us, it's a typical mortgage. You have your typical qualifications with debts and income, etc. But um, we do not charge interest. We, uh, we in turn do something a little bit differently. We actually buy the property at Divine Bank and then we sell that property to the respective customer and it has a built-in profit and they in essence have what you consider an installment plan to pay Divine Bank for that loan. Totally that helps a little bit. No, for the context, thank you. Yep. So, um, Relative to the reparations, so you know uh, we are certainly want to participate this in this and talk about the, the additional things that we're doing uh, above and beyond to help support this reparations program. Um, first, we're giving a, a quarter percent interest rate reduction to not only the, the grant recipients but any applicants as well that are in Cook County. So whatever our prevailing interest rates are at the time, we're taking a quarter percent off of that interest rate for every one of those potential customers. Uh, we've also partnered as a member of the Federal Home Loan Bank in Chicago here uh, to use their down payment uh, assistance program to give an additional $6,000, up to $6,000 uh, of down payment assistance for these customers. Uh, and again, that's through the Federal Home Loan Bank, which we are a member of and participate in. Um, in addition, you know, we serve some of the, the unbanked, so uh, sometimes we have U.S. citizens or non-U.S. citizens that are looking to obtain financing <coughs> to uh, get into a house. And so we have an ITIN program for folks that don't have social security numbers yet. They don't have credit, credit established yet, so we have a portfolio program that we actually keep those those loans and get some customers in that might otherwise not qualify from a traditional bank perspective. <clears throat> and lastly, just from an operational perspective, we're local. Uh, our processing team, our underwriting team, our closing team are right here in Chicago. We know the Chicago market and we're here to serve it. So uh, with all that, um, uh, we have a sales staff uh, that's here to support. Um, you can Get our contact information, Robin. I've, I've shared some information as well as a flyer. I think you guys have already for uh, the Divine Bank products, and you can also find out more information about us at divinebank.com uh, should you have interest. So again, look forward to working with you and partnering with you um, as you move forward in this reparations program. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. And last, we have <clears throat> Daniel Martinez from Self Help Bank. Excuse me. From yes, yeah, Self Help Bank. Good morning, everybody. Credit um, union, self-help yeah. credit union. Yes, see, wait. very important distinction. <laughs> yes. So good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Martinez. 
I am the director of mortgage lending uh, origination for the, for the Midwest region for Seaway Division of Self Help uh, Fred Credit Union. Uh, Self Help is a leading nonprofit CDFI headquarters in Durham, North Carolina. Locally, we have around eight offices around the Chicago land area and around 33 national, national offices in regards to our federal charter. We are honored to participate as a mortgage lender for the City of Evanston's restoration of housing program. Uh, our, our mission at Self Help is to create, protect home ownership, and provide economic opportunity for all by providing responsible lending. Though we work with all communities, we tend to focus a lot more on communities that are often underserved by conventional lenders, uh, including uh, communities of people of color, women, rural residents, and low wealth families. Self Help has provided over $11 billion in financing to families to help purchase homes, start businesses, build businesses, businesses that include uh, daycares. Nonprofit organizations, grocery stores, um, which all help strengthen communities. Episodes residents who meet its guidelines for duration um, compensation can apply uh, for Seaway subsidized loan, loan products. These products include these are the three products you've been working on. Uh, our first product is Self Help 100 product. This product finances 100% of the purchase price, with the borrower only having to make a minimum of down payment of 1% to help cover closing costs in a minimum of a 620 credit score. Our second product, we call it our Equity Boost product. It provides 105% financing, 100% financing of the purchase price and up to 5% financing of closing costs for the borrowers with a minimum investment of 1%, which is typically the earnest money they would get. These programs are available with a minimum of a 580 credit score. So even borrowers that had a little bit tough times with credit could possibly qualify for Equity Boost program. This program typically has uh, specific requirements in regards to income limits and housing prices, but all residents that qualify for the City of Evanston Restorative Housing Program qualify for the Equity Boost Program. Both of these programs we, we are offering will not have any private mortgage insurance, which helps to put a little extra money in the borrower's pockets. All of these programs were established because we understand sometimes it's hard to save for a down payment of 20%, 10%, or 3.5%. We believe that everybody should have an opportunity to become a homeowner and provide and build wealth via home ownership. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, I want to make sure before you leave, sir, that if you have any information to connect with our staff so we can get it electronically along with whomever your contact person is. Thank you very much. And although I don't think um, Liberty shared many of the details of their program, um, I was. I hope that you do pass along those details in writing so they can be shared. They expand beyond uh, mortgages into supporting black businesses as well, which could be really important. Um, and then just a note, we hear all the time from the community, particularly the ally community, how can um, you be helpful? And this, these introductions are an example of an ally being helpful. And Matt Feldman is here. He's a longtime Evanstonian that has um, used his professional network to challenge financial institutions to do more uh, in lending. And Matt, we want to thank you for your support. Do you want to say anything, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> no, quiet. No? Okay. Silent. Thank you so much. Um, for those of you that walked in late, we, as we do with, with all of our other meetings, <coughs> typically have public comments at the beginning. And so uh, we didn't have a sign-up sheet. If there's anyone else who came in that wanted to participate, you have two minutes. And if not, then we'll continue on with our agenda. Nope, I'm here with Dave, and I'm sure that you'll... Thank you. You saw me looking directly at you. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah, from Bank, um, with Dave. Yeah. Thank you for being here. All right, we're going to jump back into the agenda. Thank you all very much. Uh, next up, we have item A for discussion. It's an update on the uh, orientation, the one-on-one -on -one of the first 16 uh, reparation uh, beneficiaries. Good morning. I am Audrey Thompson. I'm the interim uh, director for Parks and Recreation. I uh, just want to give you all an update for those of you all who do not have the report. Um, we have met with um, all 16 beneficiaries and six of those beneficiaries have chosen uh, home improvement. Uh, five have chosen a combination of home mortgage assistance and home improvement. Uh, two beneficiaries have chosen home mortgage assistance, one uh, home purchase, 
and then we still have two who are undecided and as of yesterday that person is decided I picked up their packet and they are doing a combination of mortgage assistance um, as well as uh, home improvement so um, we are we're there um, and we've also dispersed uh, two invoices for the two who only wanted um, the home mortgage assistance so that 25,000 will be paid um, primarily to paying down the mortgage. Um, and they chose the one that would allow them not to have, um, you just pay the 25 where they don't have a payment every month. So um, that's really good. Um, last, last time we met, I did speak about Rebuilding Together and um, the grant that they had received from the Evanston Community Foundation. Um, SEPA and Evanston Community Foundation have met um, to discuss how they will better work together so that it's a seamless process uh, for each of our beneficiaries. So um, even though that's $20,000, they're estimating that will uh, pretty much double based on uh, many of the beneficiaries um, who need certain things that volunteers can provide. So uh, we have a pretty exhaustive list of everything each of these individuals want as far as home improvement. And so we're really looking forward to working and collaborating. Um, and many of them have already had the handyman to come out and provide free services. So um, it is really um, a wonderful way to collaborate and to bring about some of the uh, programs and services already provided by the City of Evanston. Thank you very much. Any quick questions or comments? Thank you for a very comprehensive report. And just for those of you that are living, so just for you, for those of you that are listening in, I think over maybe two or three meetings ago, we talked about having a group meeting with all of our beneficiaries just to explain in detail uh, the the requirements of the program. I mean, when we in the, on the front end of this, we had a number of community meetings that talked about the application process and what the requirements are, but we felt that it was especially important because this is so brand new to meet one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the families and our staff was able to meet with them in their home, actually see what it is that they wanted to do. And I think it was during that process, and I want to thank the staff, it's something that we've talked about in the past is what other services can we do to help um, assist them with, with, their, with their everyday life and, and I think you've all have done a wonderful job and I know that we'll, as we continue to report this out, we'll be able to share uh, some of the other details. So thank you very much to Audrey and to, Sh to Sheik. Uh, Council Member Reed, you had a question? Yes, uh, thank you uh, Audrey. Uh, so, uh, please forgive me if somehow I missed this while you were speaking, but uh, I heard you said that there, you know, we're there with 15 people, but there's still one person, right, who we're not there with. And so, can you? Uh, I think we're not there until we're we're, we're there. And so, can you help uh, talk about that person's situation and how we might be able to? Uh, so, so that person is still trying to um, decide how. Um, she would be able to use the twenty-five thousand. She is currently a renter, and is not sure as to if she would be able to get a mortgage. So it's, um, I'm really happy to hear about some of the options that were presented today, um, because if she is not able to get a mortgage, or um, so it would be very difficult for her to use uh, the twenty-five thousand. So that's where we are with her. So uh, I do want to explore. So certainly. If she's interested in a mortgage and one of the institutions that were uh, that are present today are able to assist her in that, if that's the route that she goes, then great. Right. Or, or I don't know, did we gender this person? I don't know. She said she. Okay, she. Yeah, if that's the route that she goes, uh, then um, uh, then then that's great. But if uh, it it occurs that you know either she doesn't qualify for the for that or that's not what she wants. I really would like us to explore that option of uh, of do, being able to do something else and not, you know, this person was selected, they were told that they were going to receive uh, repair, and uh, I know there may have been uh, some, un, uh, some, it wasn't, there wasn't clarity uh, in to, as to whether that uh, 60 some odd thousand dollars that was raised privately um, could go 
toward or be used for this. Certainly the cannabis dollars cannot, um, but I'd really like us to explore that uh, and get uh, clarification from legal um, as to whether that's possible. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that you, you made that statement because it does give us an opportunity to provide some clarity around that. I think that for most of the applicants, and I realize when you're brand new at something, there's only so many times that you can explain it, and particularly because it, it, it helps to support our seniors, it's worth saying again. So we created an application that <coughs> sorry, we made sure that, um, that they understood for this first repair what the criteria was. Clear application. And so I understand that, and I, I think we've said it over and over again. We're just at the first 4% of, of, of what we're doing. And it's, it, it was important based on community meetings, and please feel free to, to, to share at, at any point, that based on the harm and how we were able to prove the harm, that our housing was our first remedy. It's the foundation. It is not limited. Um, we still have so many other areas of what true reparation means to explore, and we'll continue to talk about that. And I hope that you'll be able to provide some insight later on for your report, and that's why we've added that section to help our community to understand that although we're the first, we're not the only, and the efforts of reparations are older than all of us uh, combined in here. And uh, we're blessed to have the presence of uh, our committee member, Robin Simmons, who is leading that effort. Not only has she done that in Evanston, but supporting efforts uh, that impact all across the country. And so I don't know if there's, I, I know Claire wanted to share something, Bonnie, I know we've talked about it. so. We'll hear those comments, and if you want to comment after that, so I'll recognize so, clearer than Bob. Is my mic on? It's okay, on, yes. I, um, this has come up in the last couple meetings in some way, shape, or form, and um, I may be asking Michelle to um, perhaps ex you know give another flavor of explanation, but here we go. Having developed the program, informed the public of it and made certain representations to them during the application process and disbursement process to change it up at this point would get us into some would likely get us into some legal trouble we're inviting um, trouble we have to be careful about that we have to make sure that our representations and actions are clear and it doesn't, um, unfortunately, it doesn't leave us room, doesn't leave us all the flexibility of maneuvering to um, accommodate these, these cases as they come up. Um, the fact that, that the program has different aspects to it and that hopefully another aspect will, you know, uh, 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 the recipients aren't precluded from coming in with some other aspect. Um, so, you know, that this is ongoing housing is but one portion of it. But having set that up and given out the information, the application process, the various documentation, languages, forms that they've signed during that, um, it would be problematic legally to change up midstream. May, may, may I respond to that? I, I just want to say that I also have been um, approached about other remedies for the reparations committee to consider for those persons who do not have homes and you know it's it's just a matter of facts that this committee was put together to um, ensure that the funds were distributed and the process was developed for the program that Evanston Alderman voted for and I think that I mean, it was an excellent excellent um, communication with our community and the outpouring of people who came to hear about it and just the timeline that was allowed and I think it's unfortunate for people who were not clear on what the program really was about but the program is clear and so as Claire said it doesn't limit any other programs but I don't feel that our reparations committee can spend time on things that are not what we were put together to do. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, two things. First, I want to thank you for contacting, but the more important thing, we do have a legal obligation. And after many meetings with Robin, after many meetings with the community, 
we decided to prioritize those individuals who had received the most uh, discriminatory impact, which happened to be homeowners. Um, this is not discriminate against anybody in this community who does not own a home. But when we prioritize what our goal is going to be, that was our objective. Now, to consider other options, I think along the way, it's, it's a fine thing to do. But uh, I also have two concerns, that five people on the list have already passed away. Okay, and maybe we should think of something about a continuation of those people who qualify. And secondly, they have the option to go legacy. Uh, so explaining all of this now is like looking backwards through the rearview mirror. But thank you, Claire, for bringing that up. We do have an obligation both legally and morally to address those people who have received harm and what is the best way in our small capacity to do it. Secondly, I just want to add, also I'm hearing like, when are we going to get rid of these 16 and move on to others? Yes. <laughs> that people on this list will be dead before we get to them. So we're going to have to expedite that I, I want to pick up where Mr. Sutton just left off, basically. That I'm encouraged to hear this feedback that it was, there is one only, um, but it informs and can inform how we move forward. Yes. And so there is nothing but time and opportunity, resources, partners, and allies to help us do that. And I, to your point, I think, you know, we, we've begun to get these initial reparations out of the door, and next we'll be discussing based on community feedback, what is next. And so I'm with Mr. Sutton on excited to move forward with more repair. Because, you know, we talk about this and the media reports it as if it's a settlement and we're done and we fixed, you know, uh, racial injustice and so on. And it's so far from the case um, that this is really um, just a spark. It's in its infancy. We're just, you know, taking a, 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 a first tangible, shaky step, um, and I'm looking forward to what's next. Can you restate that? Because I know that we have members. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you know, I think it's important because it's dismissed, and I've heard things that, you know, I'm, and I don't want to get defensive, that our random selection process, so that it was in the open, was reduced to bingo which is insulting. Well, we're not. We're to, not okay, not. I won't get into that. But I think what more important is just a reminder to everyone that we're in our infancy stage. And I think it was important, and we shared this earlier, so I'm just repeating what we've said collectively, that we're going to look at this first 16 and figure out what we need to know. And we're also limited, unfortunately, by the budget. And I want to thank you for your comments, as well as the other feedback, because it's important to know, because now, as we're informed, we still have 100 plus within this category. And later on, we're going to discuss our second category, which is our, excuse me, our second group. Thank you. Say category. Thank you. Um, and we'll get into that. I know that Councilman Reed had a comment, and then we'll hear from uh, uh, Director Thompson. And then I want to be mindful of the time also, people, because we can get real deep into this and we still have some great stuff. Councilman Reed followed that, Director Thompson. Yeah, I just want to. Uh, 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 just highlight what, what, what I mean here. One, I, I certainly appreciate that we are in our infancy stage, and uh, in the infancy stage, you move from, you know, uh, taking poopies all over the place to going in the proper place. And I think what we have to figure out here is uh, part of what the charge is is um, to improve the program. And so I think, to, to your point, uh, I think there certainly is room for, uh, you know, minor tweaks and tweaks that fit within the the spirit of the program and so and if there if there isn't room for that then really what are we doing here we're just moving forward with the program and there really isn't a point for this committee as well as this committee isn't just charged with you know just directly implementing this program I think this committee is charged with figuring out how do we find the funds to um, to, 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 to expedite the pace at which we are able to deliver repair to folks um, how do we um, you know, and how do we create and implement other programs? And so, you know, what, what I'm thinking here is, uh, if, if we're thinking about housing uh, for this one person, for these other seniors, the, the however many are on the list that uh, may be in a similar situation, I mean, one in 16 um, uh, is, is, is not an insignificant number of folks, if you extrapolate that out, that's another at least, 
you know, five or six people, who, seniors uh, in this category, who are going to be facing a similar situation, uh, likely. Um, and um, so how do we learn from this? Maybe a part of the housing repair could be, you know, uh, paying off someone's rent. Like, is that an impossibility that uh, we don't, I'm not saying we jump straight to direct cash payments, but can we work into the program something that would allow for us to assist this person in a way that still fits within uh, the thought bank and the thought category of, of housing? Uh, so I just want to put that on the table. And, and then, again, certainly I think the, the cannabis dollars may be restricted in a, in a and again, we're the council, or we can change laws, we can adjust things, but I think that 65000 might be a little uh, looser. And I hear what you're saying, if we had a program where we had, you know, uh, you know we said we're going to do housing and we switch it to direct cash payments, that could get us in trouble. But if we keep it to housing, um, I, I think we'll be in good order. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. And so I, I just wanted to respond. I, I know the question that was posed, and that's, that's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. But I did want to um, make sure that you all understand that Tashik and I, in visiting in the majority of homes, um, really recognized that there were needs that were, uh, I mean, really a part of housing that we were still able to provide some repair even though those, um, that those items did not come out of the, the fund. Um, but in, in doing this and having all of these one-on-ones, we have to be really, really careful because um, you know I, as a former ombudsman, someone who is really dedicated to our older adults in Evanston, would never um, recommend that someone, if they were on a subsidy for where they're currently living, would give that subsidy up for $25,000 for reparations. And so those are, are items, to your point, Council Member Reed, that you really have to look at if, when we're talking about repair, because $25,000 would not be worth how long a person um, took to get on a waiting list at one of our senior buildings. And so um, just, just take it into account to your point, uh, Council Member Reed, and, and how we move forward with just housing overall. So we do have a new building, and so it, it may not necessarily be housing like where they're owning a home, because some have just said, well, I, I wouldn't want to buy a home at this point anyway uh, because of my age or what have you. But I think it's, you know, how do we ensure that they are able to stay in their homes? And that's through programs like Rebuilding Together, Handyman, those types of programs. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows there are resources. And if someone's asking for furniture, as someone did um, with the first 16, we have also, um, we've also been given a re resource, <clears throat> excuse me, that will furnish their whole home for $450. Wow. So I'm, I'm thinking, so there are all types of resources. We just have to explore those. Thank you, thank you. And I look forward to, I know that uh, committee member Simmons has a report at the end and uh, maybe take some time out to expand um, what we've learned over the weekend and what you already know, uh, the, the definition of reparations. Because I think throughout this past year, our, our direction and focus has been in this program, but it's so much deeper than that. And I just want to take a moment to say that this 25,000 does not erase 400 years of slavery. And, and it's so important that we always remember that as we discuss it in our committee, but more importantly for our community, both black and white. This, what we're doing here is so much bigger than a $25,000 grant as we're in this first stage, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Thank you. All right, we're going to keep on track. Uh, next, we have the status of our direct, uh, pardon me, um, can I have a motion, please, to accept this report and place it on file? I move that we accept and place the update on file. I second. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we're going to move on to item number B, which is the status of direct descendants reparation applications so and there is a good morning members of the reparations no, committee no, we'll just and public uh, to seek her assistance to the city manager so as to the status of our direct descendant applicants 
Um, staff is currently working on verifying our de direct descendants. Um, I know I provide, provided you guys some numbers in your packet, but I do have updated numbers as of yesterday. Okay. So as of yesterday, um, we have verified uh, 146 descendants. We have reviewed 213 in total. Um, 56 of those individuals need to be followed up on. They might be missing a documentation. And 11 have been unverifiable. So we'll also follow up, follow up with them. But in their application, they live in Florida. They just, sum, they just submitted an application, you know. So. Can you just speak a little more to the unverifiable, what kinds of things you found? On ver those are the ones that just submitted um, an application. They have no ties to Evanston. Um, uh, they're not residents. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm surprised that number is so small. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Tishi. All right. Uh, seeing no questions and to help us move forward, um, that was just for discussion. So our next item of is a uh, communication, so reparations financial donations report, which is on page uh, 10 and 12. So as to our donations in our reparations fund, as of uh, April 1st, we received $69,253.79. Okay, thank you. Seeing no questions, we'll move on to our next item, which is, uh, ooh, so there is an action for this, I'm sorry. Is there a motion to receive uh, the reparations financial report to put on file? I move so, that. Oh. Is there a second? I second. All right, thank you very much. It's been properly moved by Council Member Reed, seconded by uh, Committee Member uh, Lockhart, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, next up, it's, it's just again a communication that for our first 16 uh, beneficiary, uh, we thought it was important to bring them all together, and there is a, a, a dinner planned um, for that uh, to, to bring them together, explain the details. Um, and I just wanted to share that with committee members and you have that information in front of you. Um, and then next up, uh, we have uh, our committee member, I call her Ambassador Lou Simmons, uh, who this past weekend, uh, myself and a few members of the committee and staff had an opportunity to travel out to DC, which was amazing to see how our city under the leadership of uh, committee member Lou Simmons is continuing to lead. And uh, by the end of this month, we should have people who have received their first report, excuse me, their first um, compensation prepared. But again, as we discussed in a much larger community of other municipalities, this work is so much more than that. And so we've asked um, our committee member, Ambassador, to have a standing report just to speak about HR 40, speak about the work that you're involved in as long as, as, as well as the efforts that we see around uh, our country. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chair Braithwaite. <clears throat> Evanston, like you are leading a nation in at least inspiring uh, local redress um, in cities small and large um, <clears throat> all over the place. And so we thought, and this came up in discussion before, that maybe we should have a um, foundational understanding of the full scope of repair and that this isn't a novel concept. It's not a, a new initiative, but black folks in the United States have been fighting for reparations uh, really since we've been here. And so we would just report every month on what's happening currently so that if anyone is interested in supporting those efforts or learning more about those efforts or being an advocate, um, you have more context. And I didn't start on here with uh, reparations for people of African descent globally. In 2001, in uh, the World Conference Against Racism, the United Nations in Durban, 
determine the uh, transatlantic slave trade and its legacies, crimes against the humanity, and that the United States um, was responsible to give reparations to the black community. But right now, <clears> H.R. <throat> 40 is in Congress. It was introduced in 1989 by Rep. John Conyers, and until uh, recently, it had not passed out of um, committee. In 2015, it is important to note that that reparation bill was edited by the National African American Reparations Commission, who we know as NARC, one of our partners, to include uh, remedy proposals and not just a study. And in 2018, the fearless Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee assumed as the uh, lead sponsor for H.R. 40. And in just last year, H.R. 40 passed for the first time out of Judiciary Committee. It is not gone for a um, House or a floor vote yet at this point. But there are 197 co-sponsors in the House, plus the Congresswoman. There are 20 yes votes, so right now uh, there is the um, commitment to pass H.R. 40 in the House. It's not happened. Um, I do like to add, before you go calling our Congress people, we have Congresswoman Jan Joukowsky, um, <clears throat> Senator Dick Durbin, Senator Tammy Duckworth, who are uh, supporters and co-sponsors of both H.R. 40 and its Senate Companion Bill, S40. <clears throat> Additionally, there is a first ever Senate Companion Bill. It was introduced by Cory Booker uh, last year. There was S10 before that, and it has about 22 uh, co-sponsors at this time. So just want to put that in context that there are federal efforts for reparations that are happening. Some may say they've been languishing. I would agree with those that say that. Um, but there is another hope for and demand for repair. Additionally, the state of Illinois in uh, summer of 2020, um, HB 5024 was introduced by Rep. Will Davis. <clears throat> it passed in committee in 2021. It also died in committee in 2021. Mm -hmm. So if you have any relationships at the state or interest in um, making demands for reparations at a state level, uh, Rep. Will Davis is who made that introduction, and we need reparations at a state level as well. Uh, moving on to the city of Evanston, we're learning and hearing um, about our work under Resolution 126 R19 every month under the leadership of uh, Chair Braithwaite, but some additional initiatives that we should know about. We recognize that this initial commitment from the city of Evanston alone is not enough. Housing alone is not enough. Um, there is a report that is on the city of Evanston's website that speaks to the dozens of recommendations for remedy and redress that black residents in those meetings in 2019 recommended to the city. And this really should be a report that partners in the city are looking at. Our other institutions, um, our other industries, looking at how you can participate. We're doing what we are able to do within our purview under the direction of our um, corporation, corporation council here at the city of Evanston. But the Reparation Stakeholder Authority of Evanston, um, it is uh, currently, the fund is currently housed at the Evanston Community Foundation. It is led by uh, our own Dino Robinson and Reverend Dr. Michael Neighbors. It is a, a group of black stakeholders that will bring reparations uh, informed by black community members. The fund is held at the foundation, but it is absolutely controlled by the black organization, the RSAE. It currently has $223,000. Um, no disbursements have been made, and those determinations will be made through a community engagement process that will be led by the RSAE. And there is an expectation that that community process will start in the fall of um, 2022 or by the fall of 2022. A couple of um, honorary mentions for that $223,000. Um, the the uh, fund was seeded by the Evanston Community Foundation. Uh, the fund really was initiated uh, or bringing um, re reparation dollars was initiated by Nina Caven of Dear Evanston. Um, and then there was a recent contribution of $50,000 from First United Methodist Church under the leadership of Pastor Grace, um, as well as a um, major gift from the uh, Lewis Sebring Family Foundation as well, $25,000. 
Um, you can learn more <coughs> directly from Pastor uh, Michael Neighbors or Dino Robinson. Also want to note that the Interfaith Clergy of Evanston is working on a major uh, reparations uh, campaign and fund to launch by uh, sometime around Juneteenth or in June of this year. Um, they have already begun to mobilize and so that is a um, coalition of 20 plus congregations in Evanston plus some in the uh, Chicago North Shore area. For more information there, you can reach any of these three leaders. Reverend Grace from First United Methodist, senior pastor there, Rabbi Andrew, Andrea London from Beth Emmett, and Reverend Dr. Uh, pastor Wolf, Reverend Dr. Michael Wolf um, from Lake Street Church, he's the pastor there. And just putting that all in context that there is a lot happening in Evanston. Um, and then in terms of the local reparations movement, there is a movement. We are not alone anymore. Although we initiated this work in 2019, there have been dozens, maybe more at this point, that have um, joined the movement in implementing local reparation um, programs. And we have been convening. In December of uh, a few months ago in December, we convened here uh, in Evanston. And there were about 60 local leaders that came across the nation. Uh, the event was sponsored by NARC. Um, who received um, a grant for the work from the MacArthur Foundation so that we can learn and share together. So Evanston is not dictating, it's not leading. We are not the model, we are an example and an inspiration. We're a partner to these other communities that we're learning from as well and learning best practices. Some of these other cities are doing incredible things, like I love what's happening in San Francisco. Um, and so in this report, it will eventually be online. It has some communications from um, previous convenings, including just this past weekend, we were in Washington, D.C. And we were there at Howard um, University Law School at the Third Group Marshall Law Center. Um, we were there also with the International Center for Transitional Justice and uh, the African American Redress Network, as well as Columbia University. And there, along with about 30 local leaders from across the nation, we were learning and sharing again together, sharing what we've done, sharing what hasn't been working, where we need room for improvement, where we've done well, and we've shared that information and we're growing. Um, so just wanna put these things in context that we're very hyper-focused as we should be on what's happening here at this committee, and we're all accountable and want to do great work, uh, but there are other initiatives that we should all be made aware of as well. Thank you. That was, that was powerful. Um, I know that we had a few other committee members that had a chance to go to D.C. Committee member uh, Claire Barber and to she, Claire, do uh, you want anything? And let me add this because I know oh. people get, you know, what, how did you, who paid and all that. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right, right. it was 100 percent um, sponsored by the um, International Center for Transitional Justice, which is a 20-plus-year-old um, not-for-profit um, and NGO in South Africa and here in the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I thought it was uh, the experience. I was really grateful for the experience. So um, I just am very thankful that I was able to, to be there. Um, it's really, as we move forward and we go through our growing pains that we discuss here, you know, in committee and um, that Tashik and Audrey and the Evanston team actually face in practice. And by the way, thank you so much for your expertise that you bring there. Um, it's really helpful to find out what other uh, institutions are doing so that we can, some of them have had a very different approach so that we can learn. Um, it really uh, re-emphasizes for us the local, local, local for finding out what your community needs are. So very grateful for um, the uh, our, our city of Evanston's uh, insight uh, and foresight to, to to move to move forward in that way. Um, and it was all, it was also kind of therapeutic to get together, and it's it's a tough topic for us, very emotional, and uh, but we have to at least stay focused. And the amount of intellectual firepower at that conference was really um, amazing, encouraging, and uh, I learned a lot. And I think I, 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 opportunities like that, I think, will really help us to move the program forward. So thank you.
Yeah, and I would also share Claire's sentiment for me to highlight what seeing what other cities are doing. Um, so I met with Amherst, Detroit, Rhode Island, Rhode Island? Yeah, yeah. Providence. Providence. Rhode Island. Providence. Detroit. They actually followed up with me and just where you guys are at um, yesterday. So yeah, that was the highlight for me, hearing what other cities are doing. And yeah. Like you said, um, we might not be the model, but we're setting an example. Yeah. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that we have, uh, in Dona, there are a few other comments, and I want to also pay attention to the time. So, Dino, and I can't see the face that's in a mask, I'm sorry. Did you have a quick comment, Dino? No. Yeah, Dino was one of the uh, virtual facilitators. Yeah, oh, yes. Virtual. Uh, this was a hybrid uh, conference, it was over two days. Um, there was a virtual component on day one, there were about 83 participants on day two or 23 we mirrored what was happening in person at power yeah and i and matt feldman also was a virtual um facilitator yeah yeah so i i think the the important thing is we're going to continue to have more of these reports that i think serves to inform our our community i know that you are working on a on a your second symposium, yes. Oh yeah, that'll be and like the last one, it was it it was uh, open open to the community uh, for the town hall, and then the working sessions were for local leaders that are engaged in the work, and that one is always open to Evanston residents. It there's a communication report in this report. Um, that debriefs that December meeting. And so the next one will be in um, November or December. It was December last year, I'm hoping for November this year because of weather and, but that information will come out by summer. Yeah. Um, I guess what I would say the, the most important, one of the things that I learned is that there's so many additional areas of, of reparation that we discussed while we were there. And I really appreciated the time that we spent on wellness that addresses the trauma that we've all, most blacks in, in this country have endured. Uh, you know, it, it has just been absorbed in our DNA. And to hear that topic be unpacked in many different ways, I thought was very therapeutic for me. And I hope that we will as we experience that this past weekend, we'll be able to translate it because again, um, and I'm just speaking to the criticism, this is just the privilege I'm taking. It's, it's really unfortunate if you reduce it just to compensation. And, and we've learned that through that experience of the weekend, there's so much more. So I just wanna thank you very much, uh, community member Simmons for the work that you're doing. Can't thank you enough as well as acknowledging the work that's going on around the country. So. With that being said, that is our first repair update that will be in our next month's packet. Did you? Yes. I, had a, uh, I was curious, um, Councilman Bruce Simmons, one, thank you for the report and thank you for the work that you're doing uh, locally and nationally. Um, I was curious about uh, what, uh, San, it was really interesting, uh, you, you mentioned San Francisco seemingly almost as if maybe they are a city to really look to. What are some of the interesting things they're doing, or is there a place that you can point? Uh, I wouldn't say any of them are, I w we would look to, uh, but I appreciate some of the best practices that they have. Um, one is, and I don't want any compensation, but one is that they um, have a stipend for those stakeholders in the community that are doing the work, um, acknowledging that Black folks generally, you know, don't have the same resources to get daycare and this sort of thing. Um, I appreciate that as well as an ancestral acknowledgement, which I'm going to be working on for approval by the committee. Um, and I appreciate how they start their meeting framed in why they're there to do that work. And I was really inspired by that. And so I'm going to work on a draft and hopefully we can share in um, in that draft and begin to open our meetings acknowledging why we're doing the work. Thank you. Those are two things that just jumped yeah. out. Oh, with thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right. Ch I'm sorry. If we're, uh, I see that public comment and then adjournment are next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've already done the public comment. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. The adjournment would be next. So I just, uh, I, I do want to, um, you know, speaking to the need to and the desire to uh, continue moving forward 
uh, I would love for this committee to start discussing uh, alternative sources of revenue uh, to fund uh, the reparations uh, fund. Um, and uh, for example, uh, you know, I part, we know that part of the uh, issues based on housing. Uh, uh, in, in fact, one, one thing uh, to shoot that I wanted to mention earlier is uh, with some of the uh, there's a list of documents on the web page, and one of the documents that isn't there is uh, that the clerk's office did a report, which was the first. Uh, kind of city document that, and if that could be added to the, the record as well. Um, but 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 also we, we know that uh, that black folks were uh, moved from the lakefront uh, to the fifth ward and other parts of of the city. And uh, there is there uh, put this proposal forward. I think there's revenue to be generated. We could generate over a hundred thousand dollars a year if we imposed a. Uh, a, a certain kind of fee on lakefront homeowners, um, which would, you know, these are the 47 wealthiest Evanstonians, uh, and this would, you know, comparatively to them be, you know, pennies, uh, be a, a few hundred dollars a year, uh, or a few thousand dollars a year to these folks, um, uh, and it would generate $100,000 a year that could go to the reparations fund. Um, I've put this forward to committee, and I'd just love to see it come here uh, for consideration and, and other proposals uh, that will start to generate revenue. I think we should uh, really begin, you know, to get past this 16. The next step is to get more money because there, there is no more money. Uh, we're, there, there's, you know, the $400,000 that we have, and we'll maybe see $200,000 a year. Um, until uh, a dispensary is, and other dispensaries are added, and even then, I think we're we're we're, we're maxed out pretty quick. Uh, so, thank you for your comment. And to uh, um, thank you for your comment. I, you know, we had a meeting. I think it was last month or maybe the month before, where we opened up the comments through the conversation to the committee in terms of ideas. And I think where I closed it out as a reminder is because we are hyper-focus on getting through this first this first initiative. It's 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 difficult within the hour and a half that we've been hour that we've been allotted to get into all that. So I always encourage members of the community as well as our committee members to please submit those ideas to staff. That way we're using our time for what's on the agenda and then that way between uh Sheik and, and Director Thompson and we also have our legal department that's that's represented at all of our meetings, and we do appreciate, Michelle, your presence here, that we have time to properly vet those ideas. So um, I'd ask you to submit that in writing, and then you can forward it to our staff, and we can look at those opportunities as they come up. Um, with that being said, we're at the 10 o'clock hour. Um, seeing no additional business in front of us, is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn our meeting. <laughs> is there a second? I second. It's been properly moved and seconded to the members of the community as well as our visitors and guests and those that are tuning in. I want to thank you very much for your participation and this meeting stands adjourned.